Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. So I was trying to figure out what to do this week. I've got a number of different projects in the works. Um, working on something for the mill, but parts haven't come yet. And uh, I was working on, well, don't look over there yet. I made some dumb mistakes over there. Don't worry, I'll tell you all about it, but that's not ready yet. Um, and I'm also restoring this lathe. And as I was working on it, I thought, geez, what am I gonna do this week? And uh, I remembered that actually when I was taking this guy apart, 3D printing really saved my bacon. And I actually forgot all about it till I started working on this guy again. This is one of those things I picked it up and I thought, oh, I'm going to have this taken apart, painted, rebuilt, two, three weeks. Yeah, it was about two years ago. So you know how that goes, projects like that. But just started working on it again. In fact, I got some paint work done on it uh, earlier today. Uh, but I remember when I took this guy apart, and I have a picture here. This is not mine. This is this is the same lathe, uh, actually all together. And you can see there is uh, this feed screw here that runs down the whole length of the bed that, uh, that brings the carriage over for like screw cutting um, or just power feed uh, when you're surfacing um, down the length of a part. And that rod uh, goes into the gearbox over here and then is supported by uh, sort of a standoff over here. And I had a heck of a time getting that thing out. Uh, it's a trapezoidal thread, so maybe I could have ordered some trapezoidal nuts in the correct size, locked two of them together. Um, Cause you know, you can lock two nuts against each other on a threaded rod uh, and use that to get, you know, something out like a stud. But again, trapezoidal threads, I wasn't even sure what size it was. So I tried lots of stuff. I tried uh, soft jaw pliers. I tried wrapping it in a couple wraps of uh, like a cotton rag. Um, and like locking jaw pliers, I tried uh, rubber uh, wrapped around it and gripping it real tight. I tried a small strap wrench. I tried all sorts of stuff. Could not get that rod out. There was a nut inside of the gearbox here. Uh, so I needed to, I could hold the nut, no problem. Um, but I needed to be able to turn that really long trapezoidal uh, thread. And it's, it's sitting over here. And you can see, again, so when I say trapezoidal thread, it's a flat thread. It's not like a standard thread that you'd have on like a threaded rod or on a bolt. Uh, trapezoidal threads are much stronger because the whole thread profile is basically uh, flat. Uh, like if you, we could take, if we had a piece of stock that was the same size as the gap in the thread that was uh, square, we could drop it all the way in there uh, to, the, uh, to the base of the threads. Uh, there's another unique thing about this feed rod, and it has to do with the way that the, the power feed works on this machine. In addition to the thread, it also has a slot milled all the way down the length of it. And remember, I could get one side off, no problem. Um, one side was just supported by that, that sort of like standoff at the end. That came right off. So I could get something onto this, but I couldn't hold it. Now, maybe you guys are already guessing what I did. I designed a tool uh, that has uh, a profile that, that slides down the rod and has a piece that fits into uh, that slot that's cut uh, or that key, that keyway uh, that's cut all the way down the shaft. And honestly, I didn't think this was going to work. Well, initially I thought it was going to work. I'm like, oh, Rich, this is a great idea. This is perfect. Let's go do this. Uh, and then I printed it and I put it on here and the amount of torque that I was putting on, uh, on this piece as I was holding the bolt uh, on this end, I thought, yeah, this is definitely going to break. There's no way. Uh, but it held up. And, you know, I didn't measure it, but it was more force than you would use to remove, say, the lug nut on your car uh, to break it loose. And it held up um, with no damage whatsoever. Uh, I did print this pretty solid. I could say I even put Boxford uh, on here uh, just to remind myself what this was for in the future. Although here it sits on the <laughs> the same the same lead screw uh, a year and a half later after I took it apart. But uh, yeah, I printed this guy, I want to say probably 75% infill. This is PLA. I really like PLA for parts like this. I think it holds up uh, very well. Uh, it, it can tend to be a little bit brittle, uh, but it doesn't flex and it's a very hard, stiff uh, material. So for, for things like this, it tends to hold up very well. Although that said, you know what? Let me go grab last week's print. 
So I'm not sure if the lighting down here is good enough to see, but uh, this is my wife's car. I'm replacing the transfer case in it. And you can see I've got the transfer case split from the, the transaxle. And there's some dowel pins in there that line it up. Now I haven't actually gotten to the point where I can remove it yet, but I unbolted it and I needed to, to shift it off those dowel pins uh, out of place. And I grabbed last week's print, uh, which is our two-sided soft face hammer, one side PLA, one side TPU. And uh, yeah, the PLA side didn't hold up too well. Um, it held up for the first like maybe three or four hits uh, and then it started to delaminate. Uh, I didn't test it all the way to failure. I don't know if, if uh, it's really only the first like layer or maybe two layers that delaminated. Yeah, it's trash. Um, it's cracked apart there. Now I, I was really wailing on this, this aluminum housing uh, up here with it. But after, like I said, after three or four hits, uh, it delaminated. Now I switched over to the TPU side and man, that thing held up like a champ. Uh, I was really, really hitting uh, that housing hard. And I mean, we can see a small bit of damage. There's a, there's a cut in the face there. There's another small cut here, uh, but this held up really well. I think I'm actually just going to do uh, this side's fine. I mean, it'll take a bunch more abuse before it needs replacing. I think I'm going to do uh, an almost solid TPU piece for this. So uh, one side with a, you know, a small amount of infill uh, to keep it still kind of a, a soft face and the other side, just solid TPU. I might even see if I can get uh, a different durometer TPU to just have a, a little bit of a harder face because TPU was a, sorry, PLA was a no-go. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out last week's video where I made the uh, the two faces for the snap-on hammer. All right, back on track. So again, this thing really saved me. Uh, I don't know how I would have gotten this off of here um, without this. I probably would have eventually gotten frustrated and just used a pipe wrench on it, um, you know, damaged the threads, and then, you know, done my best to, to clean them up. Let's uh, let me go see if I can find my design file for this. Let's go take a look at the design. So you can see when I started on this, the first thing I did was basically just draw the profile um, of what this wrench was, was going to be like. And my initial thought here, the, the reason for this flat section is I thought I'd just have um, just a big flat handle coming off and then I'd extrude this up a ways. I ended up changing it a bit just so it would print faster as I didn't need the, uh, the handle itself to be the full height of the tool. Um, but I did want the, the, uh, the tool itself uh, to be quite tall. This is 55 millimeters in height. Um, just so that I had a nice, uh, you know, long portion of engagement, uh, you know, both to grip on that lead screw, but also uh, in hopes that, you know, this, uh, essentially this piece in here uh, was not actually going to break off uh, inside that, that keyway. So um, other than that, pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, I just, uh, you know, kind of brought this down. I think I actually just dragged this flat face down when I designed this, uh, you know, nothing, nothing fancy. Uh, I did break the edges just so it was comfortable in the hand, and then I rounded off this side. Uh, I did put Boxford on the uh, the wrench handle itself. Boxford pretty much just copied the design of the uh, the South Bend uh, 9A lathes, and then uh, they offered both a 9-inch and then a 10-inch version. The 10-inch is what I have, but uh, other than the spindle height, I think everything else is pretty much the same. So uh, this should fit the South Bend lathes as well. Definitely the uh, the 9A, probably the 10 inch as well. Guys, thanks for hanging out for this week's video. I realize this video might not have been as exciting as some of the past stuff that we've done on the channel, but I've got a couple different projects in the works. And the reality is sometimes the simplest of designs are the ones that save us the most time and are, and are the most valuable. And remember what time of year it is. A lot of people just got 3D printers for Christmas. And a lot of them are just like you. If you remember back when you got started in the hobby, they're downloading stuff off Thingiverse or off the Prusa site or, you know, wherever, and they're printing it. And it's cool and it's exciting. Um, but it's, it's hard to get over that hump to where you start designing your own stuff and actually getting value from it. So if you know somebody that got a 3D printer in the last couple of weeks, please share the channel with them. Um, let them kind of get their foot in the door of all the different things that you can do with 3D printing other than just, you know, downloading, print, and make stuff that you're going to throw out a couple weeks later. Uh, if you happen to be watching this video thinking, man, I could really use one of those wrenches for my Boxford or my South Bend lathe that I'm restoring, well, you're in luck. I give away all the STLs for free uh, that I feature on this channel. Take a look down in the video description. You'll find a link to my site, fpfdesigns.com, and you can download the STLs for free. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing. I put out a new video like this every single Friday. And guys, if you do subscribe, 
I will see you next Friday. Mm -hmm.